So next we are going to the uh, symposium proper, and we have a list of invited guest speakers who will present six specific research topics that they have done or are doing within Singapore. First of all, it's my pleasure to invite Dr. Tan Ho Siang, a senior research fellow at the Tropical Marine Science Institute. He will talk about the Comprehensive Marine Biodiversity Survey, a joint project involving NPARCS and the National University of Singapore, with the aim to take stock of the current state of marine biodiversity in Singapore. So let's welcome Dr. Tan, who will share some of the recent findings from this extensive project. Dr. Tan, please. Thank you very much, and a very good morning to everyone. It's uh, great to see so many people uh, coming to hear our talks. Um, I also like to thank the organizers for putting me first. Uh, just to ask a very sort of innocent question: right? How many kinds of marine organisms are there in Singapore? And this is related to what we've been doing uh, on a long, rather long-running uh, project, the, the CMBS, or the Marine, uh, Comprehensive Marine Biodiversity Survey, uh, in collaboration with uh, National Park Sport. Thank you. Um, right, I think. Uh, the objectives has been spelled out, but uh, just just to remind ourselves what we are doing, right? It's basically to to try to take stock, right? To to find out uh, what we have now since that coastal development uh, has changed uh, a great deal of what the original coastline was, right? And uh, in the last fifty years, uh, we reclaim nearly uh, a quarter to a third uh, of the original. Uh, land area, right? and then of course, uh, uh, ambitiously we want to uh, try to establish a, a baseline, right, to so that we will be able to know what 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 we are keeping, what we are conserving, what what we need to uh, uh, rehabilitate, for example. Right? So, yeah, ambitious and audacious, I guess. Um, just just a quick uh, overview of what we've done uh, so far. Right, we've we've started out basically with some of the habitats that uh, have been poorly uh, surveyed or sampled. So we started out with a mud flat uh, survey. So that was completed uh, last year. Um, we also uh, started on a seabed survey. Right, uh, the seabed has never really been. Uh, sample systematically, um, so we have uh, we're still uh, we're still working on it, but um, we are into our last uh, final year of that survey. And this uh, and last year also we started on a reef survey, so so we pretty know pretty much well know uh, what kinds of coral, for example, we have, but we don't quite know what lives with the coral, right? What what lives between the coral? Amongst the coral, under the coral, and so on. So, so, so that's that was the aim of uh, this survey to try and get hold of uh, some of the biodiversity around and in the in the reefs. And and across that time period, we we organized two uh, intensive workshops. Right, these workshops each uh, last three three weeks. We invited uh, about. 20 uh, international scientists to, to sample and to study uh, a particular area. So, so we, we did one uh, in the northern, uh, for the northern coastline, right? And we centered, uh, we, were, we were stationed in Kuala Lumpur at OBS. And then we did another one uh, on St. John's Island last year to, to, to look at uh, the southern part of Singapore. And of course, out of these uh, workshops and surveys, uh, we're now working on uh, trying to write up our results. 
and we expect uh, the workshop uh, proceedings, the international workshop proceedings to be coming out uh, hopefully towards the end of the year and next year. And then all this has, has, has been possible, right? Uh, the surveys, because we, we, we only have a limited number of staff, so the volunteers, uh, I think many of you are here, the volunteers have uh, really helped us uh, in, in, in actually sampling, right? So instead of sampling just here with one staff, we can sample 10, 10 other areas with, 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 another, with 10 pairs of hands, right? We have 10 volunteers, we have another 10 sites that we can, 10, 10 places that we can sample. So, so this really has uh, uh, expanded our, our survey and helped in our survey. And then at, at the same time, we're also trying to, to help out in, in, in uh, uh, educating the volunteers, educating ourselves as well at, at the same time. Uh, and, and we've conducted some training workshops on specific groups of uh, marine organisms. So this is roughly a, a, a sort of bird's eye view on what we've done so far. So on the part flats, for example, we have we have collected something like 30,000 specimens. We have, we have, we're still we're still identifying specimens, of course. I mean, there, there are still lots to do, but we have so far identified something like 500 species from the mud flats. And we have new records and new new, new species. And 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 the surprising thing we found is that for many of the mud flats that we've gone to. Each of these mud flats seem to uh, have a different community. And so a mud flat is a mud flat is a mud flat. I mean, if you, if you go to the mud flat, it looks similar. It's all uh, sticky and muddy and dirty. But actually, uh, if you look at what communities live there, we found that there, there are specific uh, communities that are unique to, to each of the habitats. Similarly, for the seabed, we have done so far something like uh, 135 one nautical mile by one nautical mile uh, quadrats. It's, it's, it's sampling, actually it's sampling uh, like almost the whole of Singapore kind of thing in, in, in terms of area. But we've collected something like similar number of specimens right, using the dredge and the trawls. We've identified also a similar number of species. Right? And, and we, we're, we're still, as I, as I said, this is still ongoing and we are still looking at uh, what we found. And then the, the, the third project which we have been, we started last year is to, is to try to look at, as I said, uh, organisms living between the, uh, in the, in the uh, coral reef habitat. So and we also have put out, uh, we also have put out these structures, what we call autonomous reef monitoring structures. These are, these are not, there's nothing electronic in them. It's, just a collecting uh, uh, structure, HDB flat, empty HDB flat for for organisms to settle and, and, and grow. And we've also put out some tangle nets as well in the same in the in, a, in, a, in the vicinity as well to try and see what settles, what gets caught, what settles on these things. And because it's, it's it's difficult to remove corals, right? I mean, it's difficult to remove live. I mean, we're not allowed to like, remove live coral. Uh, Lina will kill me if I do that. But. <laughs> Um, so, so we're putting up structures so that we can bring these structures back to, to find out what, 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 what settles and lives in there. So here's the, uh, the uh, photograph of smiling uh, participants from the uh, workshop that we held uh, in Albert Brown School on moving. So, and, and, and new paper has uh, also helped us, the media has helped us in, in Publicizing some of these uh, activities, and this was the uh, workshop that we held in Saint John's Island. So, I mean, these workshops have helped us a lot in the sense that um, they, 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 they uh, we organize the logistics for these scientists. Scientists just just need to come, right? We provide the microscopes, we provide the vials, we provide the lab benches, right? They just go out and do what they've been doing elsewhere. Right, they bring back specimens, and it's a it's a it's a, it's a very uh, efficient way of uh, looking at biodiversity because uh, the expert comes and he just needs to do the work. 
So these are some of the people that have uh, actually come and helped us, and they are currently writing up the results for the proceedings. And of course, uh, we've got our local guys as well to to work with them, or they work in uh, in their in their own respective fields as well. So, just to summarize. Uh, We've more or less collected something like 60,000 specimens. I mean, still counting, of course. Uh, and then, uh, from these surveys, we will be able to generate site-specific species lists. Right? We can characterize the site in terms of their biodiversity. Right? And, and from so far, I mean, it's still, like I said, it's still, the, the research is still going on and to trying to identify uh, what, what we have uh, collected. But, it looks like we have something like more than 50 new species, more, maybe more than 200 new records, and so-called 10, discovery, uh, 10 discoveries in the sense that uh, species that have been described more than 50 years ago uh, and, and has not really been talked about until now. And then, from the, of course, from these surveys, we have now we have specific uh, data on their locations, right? So we can we are able to. Uh, begin to plot out where these species occur. Right? Are they, uh, do they occur all over the uh, Singapore Strait, or are they just specifically located only on a small area? I think that's very important information. Right? And of course, uh, these, these are, these will, all these information will be supported by a peer-reviewed uh, scientific papers, right? which are being worked on at the moment. And then from these outputs, I hope to be able to uh, produce some uh, popular guides to some of the less known uh, flora and fauna, marine flora and fauna. Right? And these are also uh, in, in, in the process of being uh, compiled. And I think uh, the volunteers, I'm sure they enjoy going out with us as well as sorting the specimens. So I, I'm just going to uh, just highlight several groups uh, of organisms, it's difficult to, to summarize uh, four years work into five minutes, but uh, I just want to highlight some of the uh, interesting features of this survey. So one of the one of the survey highlights uh, was was the fact that we discovered a, a habitat that is dominated by these sponges called zestospongia, called the barrel sponge. Right, they are they are about when they are, they are fully grown they are about they're probably about this this size, right? And, and maybe uh, 50, 40 to fifty centimeters across, right? And, and each time we, we found oh, sorry, so each time we dredge in particular areas in the, in the Singapore Strait, we found that we, we can dredge up uh, several of these things or more, right? And our dredge is just a, a, a about a meter across. Uh, and the uh, width is only uh, less than 50 cm. So, so we're just we're just sampling. We're just throwing a bucket, and and, and then we are dredging up these things. So, so they must they must really be uh, abundant uh, in, in certain places. And we also found uh, new records of sponges. Uh, we, we we've been very fortunate that um, uh, TCCME has supported us in. in uh, in very, uh, in a very strong way to, to try and survey our sponges, so so we have we have quite a good uh, now quite good uh, data on marine sponges, and then we also have we think we are we, we, we think we have so far seen two new species. We described uh, another two or three new species uh, due to TCCME, right, or, or work done during the TCCME uh, projects. And then flatworms has, is, is another group that has been sort of missed out. I mean, we, we I'm sure many of the divers have seen flatworms, but you know, it's just flatworm, right? So, so we are not trying to figure out what they are. Right? So, so we've, we've, we found these. Uh, if you look at them carefully, they are really uh, colorful and, and they are diverse, right? So we've got two groups. Some with, some with the ventral sucker and the other, this one, this group without the ventral sucker. Right. And we, we think uh, we have 
have five new records. But, but for flatworms, our previous records are very poor. Right? Nobody has really worked on them, so we don't quite know uh, what has been previously recorded. And then for polychaetes, worms, right? Again, we, 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 the more you look, the, the, the more, the more the, the worse they seem to be. So we found something like 40 families of polychaetes. Uh, in our surveys, both uh, intertidal and subtidal. Uh, we, there, there were some 85 species that were recorded from Singapore previously. Right? There's some, some previous work been done. Uh, but we've added uh, something like 15, 15 families right, to the previous record and, and, and 45 genera. Right? So, so, and I think mainly it's, it's mainly because uh, uh, We've done the we've done the we've done the uh, subtitle survey. These are these are some of the families that have come up from the sub our subtitle our dredges and our falls, right? So so uh, they are we still need to to look at them more carefully. Right? They are still being figured out. And continuing with the small stuff, right? These are the isopods have been uh, pretty much ignored really uh, in the past. Uh, we only have something like 33 species uh, recorded from the past, but uh, through our current surveys, we've increased that to something like 100. So it's it's a threefold uh, increase, and we've got uh, possibly 338 new records and uh, three three new species. So these are this this is what they look like. They are result of uh, mostly entry flattened. Uh, Insects of the of the marine world, yes. But if you look at them carefully, they are they are they're really uh, sort of diverse. They, they come in all kinds of shapes and uh, sizes. And these are uh, these are pirates, which are which are actually uh, parasitic on, for example, only crabs or other crabs, fish, so on. This is the. This is the, your, 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 probably you've seen them before, uh, the sea cockroaches, right? They belong to the same group. And then the pistol strings or the snapping, snapping strings, right? Uh, I didn't bother with, really with the names, but you can see that, again, they are, they are really diverse, right? Some of them are left-handed, some of them are right-handed, you can see. And all come, they come in all different sizes and shapes as well. Well, relatively, well, this is uh, this has been sort of photoshopped to to, to fit the screen. Yeah, they are, they are some are big and some are small. And then we have, we have also looked continuing with the small stuff. Uh, pistol strings are maybe largest ones are maybe this size, but um, these are these or pistol branks or sea slugs are, uh, are small, but nonetheless uh, very striking. This, I'm sorry. Uh, this is this is actually a bivalve to gastropod. Right? A gastropod normally has a single shell. Right? But these guys, uh, which live on uh, on seaweed, right, have got a shell that is actually two valves. They are, they are not plants. They are they are, they are certainly uh, mostly snails, but the snails have got this shell that is uh, two divided into two. And these are some of the uh, some of the new uh, records that have been uh, confirmed. Sea cucumbers, right? We've also found that uh, there are sea cucumbers living in mud flats. There are sea cucumbers uh, living in uh, the seabed, right? Which has never really been sampled. Right, most, I think most of the studies have been done on coral reefs. Right, so so uh, we found that there are sea cucumbers actually living in the mud. So just to show you a variety uh, of sea cucumbers, uh, this sea cucumber, for example, hasn't got any of the uh, cute feet. They are naked sea cucumbers. Right. And then the other echinoderms, the, the, the uh, spiny skin, uh, relatives, right? We've got we've got quite a number of sea stars. I was actually I was quite surprised that we actually have something like twenty over species of sea stars. 
And then the ophiroids, of course, the ophiroids have been missed out quite a bit because they are not so easy to identify, but they are something like 40 species. And sea urchins as well, I mean, we are familiar with uh, diadema, or for some of you who have dived, but uh, they are actually more than that. So, uh, we've got a fair like, diversity of sea stars, really. Little stars and, and, and what, what what was surprising during our survey was was this guy. Right? This is a this is actually a basket star. Right? And and until to, to very recently we thought that these basket stars are really, really rare. Right? They are they are they're found in, in deeper waters. Maybe Singapore water is not deep enough, we thought. But actually when we started dredging at about fifty meters, we found that uh, uh, these guys are quite common. I mean, they're not they're not abundant, but they're I mean they are they're quite common. Each stretch, maybe we can get one or two. Right. So I think they are pretty pretty common in our deeper waters. Right. Together with the the ship, the anchor and one. And also this is this is also quite uh, uh, interesting. I mean, maybe some of you have. Uh, seen the sea mice, sea mouse, sea mouse, sea mice, yeah, and, and the sand dollars. Of course, these are the other kinds of urchins, uh, not so uh, commonly seen. Of course, these guys are in the sand, right? In the sand and so sort of sandy mud. So, uh, not not usually seen unless you go and look for them. There are another. Surprising uh, a feature of our waters is that there are some areas in the Singapore Strait that is full of feather stars. Right? This is this is pretty uh, surprising again, at least to me. So we have uh, we have found quite a number. Uh, this is uh, the way it's been. Uh, the way you look at look at them to try to identify them. Right. Of course, uh, they are big enough to, to harbor uh, some of these uh, other 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 brittle stars, other worms and streams can actually live on the uh, on the arms as well. So, feather stars has been pretty well recorded actually in Singapore. Surprisingly, somebody uh, in the past has come and, and looked at them. Uh, but we found at least 20, 21 species now uh, from the sea bed surveys. And we have at least one new record. And then, uh, lastly, to look at the acidians. The acidians are uh, related to us. They are chordates in a, in a, in a, in a sparing way. Um, this is, I'm not trying to show you the hermit crab, but it's the, it's the acidians are on the, on the shell here. Right. And this is, uh, we found this flat worm actually feeding on the uh, on the acidia. So so we've got uh, both solitary acidians, right? This is what we call a single individual. And then we've got the uh, uh, colonial acidians, which are many of these things uh, all together. Right? You can see that, uh, they also share many many zoids share a single, for example, uh, outlet. So we have something like 30 species of these things, and I, I think that's an underestimate as well. So just to very quickly summarize what we've, what we've found, right? We have something like now, uh, not just from CMBS alone, but through, through the TCCMA projects, we found something like 250 species, right? And, and, and uh, we have probably three, maybe more. Uh, new species. Uh, sea anemones, we have something like 24 species. Flatworms, more than 20 species. Polychaetes, 100 plus. Marine mites, we've got someone who came to work in the uh, Ubin expedition and, and came out with this number. Isopods and copepods, of course, these are very small organisms and, and they actually consist of the bulk of the new species of new records. But some of the bigger things as well, I mean, 
you can see that that they, they are there's still new possible new species and certainly new uh, records as well. Yeah. So so to come back to our question, how many marine organisms are there in Singapore? Uh, we haven't come to uh, an answer yet. Uh, but we are discovering more and more as we as we as we uh, look deeper. Right. So it's it's encouraging for us, encouraging for the volunteers. Right, and, and we hope to be able to continue uh, looking for more things. Thank you very much.